Hey everyone. Okay, we are here with a friend, um, Christian counselor, just someone who is uh, able to speak into the things that we are dealing with, going through, um, and because uh, we are just kind of recognizing Mental Health Awareness Month and in light of COVID-19, in light of Ahmaud Arbery's shooting that we're just dealing with and wrestling through, in light of all the things that are going on in our world, uh, I thought it would just be a great opportunity for to have a little discussion, a little conversation to help equip us um, to better understand, better cope, better uh, function and process during uh, during this time, all the emotions that we're dealing with. So we have uh, Sarah Serrano here to talk with us. Thank you so much, Sarah, for being here. So grateful that you took the time to help us. And maybe you could just give a little introduction of yourself and um, what you do, who you are. Well, hello there, Pastor Adam. I'm so um, happy to be here uh, with you. It's a pleasure for me. I love, this is one of my passions is, you know, that intersection between the uh, faith communities and mental health. Um, as a mental health practitioner. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, um, and I've been practicing for quite a while. I've been um, practicing for about 16 years, and um, in this field of uh, mental health and substance abuse, I have a private practice that I do all online, so this whole uh, being online thing is not new to me um, for, in, for my job purposes, but, um, but I am a, a mom, I'm a homeschooler, and that's how I know you guys. Um, I met you guys through the homeschooling community, um, but I, you know, I'm also very involved in my community of faith, and it's just you know, my relationship with Christ is first and foremost, so I'm so glad to be here and to talk to you guys today about mental health. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, excited for this. Look, no one would have planned this. No one wants to be in the situation that we're in. Um, we are having to, to deal with uh, just a lot of new stuff, crisis on just a global scale. Uh, the, I, the issue of mental well-being, mental health is on a good day, we're all struggling. Now, bring in the things that we're having to deal with. Um, what, what have you seen uh, as, as a mental health professional? What have you seen during this time? What are, what are the things that are most affecting people right now? Right. So what you're saying is absolutely correct because I know, you know, before all this happened, this is something that our nation was struggling with already. Um, so if we, you know, we're saying that a pandemic is something that is widespread throughout the world, um, then mental health was already a pandemic and nobody's yeah. saying that um, because in, in this country um, anxiety and depression are the two most diagnosable uh, illnesses in this in this country for women for women men and children yeah. all right and worldwide depression is the number one cause of disability worldwide mm -hmm. so this is something that you know has been going on so when this whole thing started as mental health professionals we knew that this was just going to be um, not a great situation because it's, it just exacerbates already the crisis that everybody was living already with the anxiety and the depression. Um, and that's exactly what we've been seeing. Um, the first few weeks, you know, it was, it was people kind of like, okay, we can handle this. And then, you know, after the third and fourth week, it's a lot of crisis calls. I've been doing a lot of crisis work, people afraid to leave their homes, uh, uh, people who don't know how to interact with our family members and they're in the home with the families all the time and they don't know how to be together. Um, people who are hopeless and feeling helpless and hopeless, um, a lot of suicide ideation. So it's been, it's been quite a, uh, just crisis after crisis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, the isolation I know mm -hmm. is, is really impacting a lot of people. And if you were struggling already with, depression, anxiety, other, mm -hmm. uh, other issues, it's all becoming heightened and put, um, uh, put into a whole new state for, for so many people. So what, what do we do? What can we do? Uh, what do we need? How do we need to think and process mm -hmm. as we're going through as all of us, but especially those who are maybe in a more acute phase of these, um, of these issues, what can we do to process and to cope? Sure. One of the th things I've been telling people is that they have more control over this than they think. 
Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of it is, wow, but all those things I can't control. Yeah, we cannot control the virus and we cannot control all these things and the, and the, and the measures that the government's taking and who's open and who's not. But these issues um, are, start with your thought life. I mean, these, you know, you, these, all these things are happening around us, but the way we think about mm. it, that's the key. And uh, that is completely and 100% under your control, under mm. your control. Um, so our thought life and um, CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy, is one of my favorite interventions. It has so much uh, this evidence and backing behind it. But the reason I love it so much is because, you know, this, this guy, Dr. Beck, invented this and he developed this. But yet when I read my Bible, I see it there. Mm. I see that, you know, the way to change is by changing your thoughts and by focusing, set your mind upon these things, whatever is true, whatever is noble. I mean, all of these things are in the Bible and it's true because our thoughts are so important. So the first thing I would tell people is to really examine your thought life. Are you being negative or are you being more positive? Who's feeding your thoughts? All right. This, you know, this whole thing with information diet that I've been telling people, what are you watching? Mm -hmm. um, how often are you watching it? You know, what's feeding the frenzy of this, uh, this crisis in your mind? And what can you do to reverse that? And what can you do to get a grip on the, on the negative thinking, what I call problem thinking, where it's catastrophizing and really hypothetical thinking where you, you think you know what's going to happen and then you set yourself up for, well, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. All right. Um, so why be worried about that? Why are we worried about tomorrow? And the Bible speaks on that too, right? Jesus was speaking on that too. Why worry about tomorrow? Let's focus on today. So the uh, thought life, it's a huge thing. It's a preventive measure too, um, to have a more positive outlook, to be able to immediately see those negative thoughts and stop them before they turn into like this movie with a bad ending. All yeah. right. Yeah. Um, so that's a, that's a big deal. And that's the number one go-to is how do you uh, channel your thoughts into a more positive and more hopeful um, attitude? And I think Christians have one of the best weapons for that. Um, yeah. And it's, you know, relying on the Holy spirit and, and the word of God to inspire us to, you know, hope and faith that God is in control. Yeah. It's so good. I see the connections clearly in scripture. Um, you know, in the Psalms, David commands his soul to, to feel a certain way, to think a certain way. You know, he says, mm -hmm. you know, bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless the Lord, all that's within me. Hope in God. You know, these are the words. And then, of course, in the New Testament, set your minds on things above and, and to really focus. And, and we know that that's hard in the moment. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why we need to be intentional about it. It's we a discipline. It's a discipline. It's a discipline. And the more you do it, the more automatic it'll be. If mm -hmm. your thoughts are automatically more negative, because, it, and, and the way we cope, um, uh, Pastor Adam, is mostly learned behavior. Hmm. We cope in certain ways because we saw people coping that way, because our parents, and because it, it's mostly learned behavior. And I always tell people, if you learned it, you can unlearn it. Mm. If you learn it, you can unlearn it. But the problem is that people try to get people try to get rid of those bad habits, but they don't replace them with good habits. And if you leave an empty space, it's always going to be filled with something. You don't want something worse to come in there. So if you are trying to not think negative, it's not about ignoring the thoughts. It's about replacing them with more positive things. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is good. It's really, it's even helping me, you know, again, yeah. process. I, I struggle with these things mm -hmm. you know, like we most all do. people do. Mm -hmm. And I can be very negative in thought. I can be catastrophizing. And, you know, I, I sometimes liken it to a roller coaster, you know, as you're, that's that part where you're going up, 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 up. Mm -hmm. Once it hits the top and starts going down, you know, not much you can do at that point. It's catching it yeah. on that way up. So you stop. Before, right. And before it, it heads over. You're going over. down, you got to let it ride. You just, you just got to let it go, let it ride. But then you have to, you have to get to a point where you evaluate and say, okay, that happened. It was just got out of my control. Mm -hmm. How do I, how do I not go there again? Yeah. And then you just take, it's not, it's not like you lost the battle. It's just that, you know, it, that instance, it didn't work because we're not supposed to be perfect either, but we're supposed to be learning, always learning from our mistakes. Like, I'm not going to let it get that bad again. I'm yeah. going to try my best. It's really good. So good. Um, gosh, we could talk about so many things here. Um, what, what are some practical things that we can just mm -hmm. help our people in terms of, okay, you're dealing with this. And if you're dealing with the trauma from COVID, if you're dealing with the trauma from Ahmaud Arbery's shooting and just bring, that's triggering all kinds of emotions and 
past experiences that, that you've experienced um, as we're dealing with people who are sick and people who there's just there's so much happening and the headlines are horrible and everything is just seems so you know hopeless at times. What can we be doing uh, practically sure. to deal? So um, inputs. So that's a, a big word here. It's inputs. You know, we, we started talking about the mind because what are we inputting into our thoughts, right? But it, it also is about everything that's feeding you. So what inputs, what are you doing? What are you putting into you? And that includes physical activity. It includes hobbies. It includes nutrition. What are you doing? And again, it's about getting a sense that we have more, again, we have more control than we think. Mm -hmm. And we have more control than we think. And we have all these, these tools that we can use. So we want to be promoting healthy, a positive thought light, but we also want to be promoting uh, good inputs about what we're reading. Again, what we're, what we're paying attention to, what we're committed to, mm -hmm. what we're committing ourselves to. Um, our hobbies and our interesting, are they healthy and are they contributing to a healthy lifestyle? Are we, are we communicating, are our communications with other people healthy? What are we debating and what are we talking about? Is it, is it promoting health or is it just making us more frustrated because we're, we're trying to change other people's minds? This is what's happening with the, um, with the Ahmad case. Right now, it just, everybody, it seems like there's a lot of bickering too um, over it. A lot of people are, you know, it's the div divisive also. Can we have conversations surrounding this that are helpful and that we can respect each other's point of view and not be forcing each other's point of view. And the same thing with the virus. Um, who's opening, who's not? Who wants everything open? Who doesn't want things open? It's, it's all about, um, is it helpful? Is it positive? Is it feeding me? Is it feeding me a uh, good thing? So we want to definitely do those things. Maintenance is another thing. If you already have good hobbies and good habits, how do you, how do you maintain those when, you just feel like, why am I even doing this? If that's not going to change, it is making, it is making a difference. Hmm. How do you maintain those for you? How do you maintain those preventive measures? Being intentional and planning your day. All right. Um, this is something that so many people just don't do. When you plan your day, you have to be intentional in putting in good things into your day and not letting the, the, the day plan itself by piling on stuff and just, you know, jumping onto your agenda. No, you, there's things saying, no, I don't have time for this today because my priorities are this. All right. And if I have time for it, then I'll get to it. But if not, then it'll be done tomorrow. Um, so planning your day is a big, a big thing. And then just self-evaluation every day. We have to evaluate um, how we're doing because last week we might've been doing good, but this week might not be so. And we have to be okay with making changes. What worked last week might not work this week. You may need more intention to be more intentional in, in connecting with your family. You need to be, maybe you need to be more intentional in a hobby or in turning things off. Maybe this week you really need to turn off social media mm -hmm. because it's just eating at you. So you have to be always in this process of self-evaluation. And the last thing is mutual care. So I said prevention, maintenance, and mutual care. Mm -hmm. How do you give... All right. Help. How are you supported to other people? But at the same time, how are you humble enough to accept support? We're so good at helping and giving advice and doing that. And when somebody asks us, well, how can I pray for you? And we go, no, I'm okay. I'm fine. Yeah. Well, guess what? Maybe you're not fine. <laughs> and it's okay. It's okay to say, I'm just not having a great day. And I'm disappointed because I thought I was stronger than this. And then we get, we get so self-critical. How do you um, help others, but how do you allow others to be healthy by helping and serving you? Because if we know that serving others is healthy, but we don't allow others to serve us, then we're not contributing to their mental well-being either. Yeah. Yeah, man. So good. Um, yeah. I'm hearing prevention, maintenance, maintenance and mutual care, prevention, maintenance, mutual care. This is, this is a good framework for us. I think prevention is so huge. You know, and like you said, we don't take prevention and maintenance often too, too, too serious. It's like taking a vitamin, you take a vitamin, you don't feel anything, right. but it's doing all kinds of stuff in you. And we need to be doing that practicing good habits of right. what we're bring, what we're putting in, what we're speaking, what we're choosing to focus on, mm -hmm. choosing joy over sorrow, choosing hope over hopelessness. Um, and I, that, that is so good. Um, so for people that also need just a little bit of extra help, in this um, one that's that's not a bad thing um, and there are resources available that i think we're gonna 
we're, we're going to make known to to yeah. you know for whoever's going to be watching this we'll have a list of resources for people that you'll be able to provide i know you do this work but there's also others um yes. who come from a christian perspective and and deal with this and so we'll be able to provide our people with some some resources absolutely yeah great well thanks so much for your time i, I maybe we can do it again uh to, to talk, great. More, yeah. talk more about these things uh there's so much that that people are dealing with and it's so hard to capture it all in a 10 minute conversation but really appreciate you taking the time with us and um i will uh be in touch and hopefully we can do it again and we'll we'll make sure we get a bunch of resources out for everybody who's who's watching absolutely it's been a pleasure so thank you everybody love thank it thank you so much sarah